Yes, dear scholars, you are still at TB Talks Education. Let us proceed with advanced biology. Of course, level scholars, senior five, senior six, let us proceed with uh, what we call mutation and specifically we are looking at uh, the conditions or the mutations which arise from change in the number of chromosomes and specifically we are looking at aneuploidy. So now, uh, having looked at Downy syndrome and then Kilnefelter syndrome, uh, which we said occurs in males only, and Turner syndrome, which occurs in females only. And previously, we also looked at what we call Downy syndrome or Mongolism, which occur in both males and the females, then of course, this time we can have an illustration showing Turner's and Kilnefelder's syndrome using a cross. So, I am going to illustrate Turner's and Kilnefelter's Kilnefelter's syndrome using a cross. So now here, remember that we must have a male and a female because Kilnefelter syndrome and Turner syndrome occur in the male and female respectively. So we shall have male, we shall have parents, parents phenotype, parents phenotype. Here we shall have a male and then we are crossing the male with a female with a female in other words we shall have a mating a mating or a fertilization between a male and a female so now parents genotypes parents genotypes Parents genotypes, of course the parents are diploid in nature. Uh, the male is the male or sex genotype of the male is XY. XY. We are crossing with XX, the sex genotype of the female. Now, this these chromosomes X and Y segregate or separate during meiosis. So we have meiosis here, where gametes, I mean, where the chromosomes segregate during gamete formation to form. No, so but what, what happens here is that if we want to illustrate Kilnefelder syndrome, so here. Meiosis occurs in the male with none with none disjunction. So I would say that meiosis meiosis occurs occurs in the male. Meiosis occurs in the male with none disjunction. Meiosis occurs in the male with non-disjunction, meaning that the X and Y chromosomes never separate. They just move into one gamete. And so now here, I will have this. I will have X, Y. Put it in a circle. Okay? And then the other gamete won't have any chromosome so it will be empty it will be empty and now this one here for them they will separate or they will segregate that is now in the female to form x and then x so you can see in the male there has been none is junction whereby uh, the gamete has been formed with, with 
all with both X and Y chromosomes. So both X and Y chromosomes just move into one gamut. They are carried in a single gamut. So we have gametes, gametes here. They are not haploid, all are not haploid because these ones are uh, all this gamete is carrying two chromosomes. So now what happens at fertilization? So we can show our cross lines and then see what will happen. So I can have my cross line from this gamete, from this gamete. Of course, this one here, I shown on the board. Then also, I will have another cross line. Uh, of course, coming to this gamut, carrying the X chromosome. Then, uh, for this gamut, which is empty, which has no any chromosome, then of course, we shall also have another cross line from that. Of course, going to this one here and then we shall have another cross line coming to this gamut so hope you are observing what is happening on the board so at the end of it all we shall have offspring one with genotype x x y okay then this one here will also have X, X, Y, X, X, Y chromosomes, X, X, Y chromosomes. This one will have X, zero, X, zero, because the gamete is empty. It is not carrying any chromosome. Then this one also will be X, zero. It will also be X, zero. So now, this will be offspring, offspring, genotypes, offspring, genotypes. Now, all those happen is during random fertilization. Random fertilization. They happen during random fusion of gametes or the random fusion, uh, I mean random fertilization. But now, what are the phenotypes of these offspring or the children? Okay, offspring, offspring, phenotypes, offspring, phenotypes, offspring, phenotypes. Now, from the genotypes of the children, what are you trying to observe here? You can see that these two offspring or children who are the boys have got two X chromosomes in their sex genotype. So, uh, of course, the genotype has changed. Under normal circumstances, it is supposed to be XY, but now you can see that now the boys have got or have acquired an X six chromosome and so now these boys are said to be having a condition called Kirnefelter's syndrome so a syndrome with E so these individuals here the boys have what we call Kirnefelter's syndrome we use red same have Kilne filters, Kilne filters, Kilne filters, Kilne filters, Kilne filters syndrome. Those are feminine males, so they will possess all the characteristics that I outlined, uh, of course, previously. Now, these two who would be the baby girls, or who are the baby girls actually, but they are missing an X chromosome. So, for them, they have a condition called Turner's, Turner's syndrome. 
Turner syndrome. So now you've seen how Kirne filter syndrome or how individuals suffering from Kirne filter syndrome and Turner syndrome, which are conditions arising from aneuploid, a form of mutation that occur in the chromosomes, leading to an increase or reduction in number of chromosomes within a gamut. Of course, we can see that the children with XXY have Kirne Filter syndrome, and then those ones with X0, X0, X0 have what we call Turner's syndrome. So that is an illustration showing how Kirne Filter syndrome and then Turner's syndrome occur during meiosis and of course fertilization. Let us meet in the next video where we are going to discuss polyploidy or euploidy.